Hello, this is a uh, open bar with John. I'm here with a guest. His name is Kent Hovind, and we're going to be talking about evolution and uh, possibly it fitting into the Bible, possibly fitting into religious beliefs, or however it goes. Um, would you like to introduce yourself real quick? Well, sure. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. My name's Kent Hovind. I've been a Baptist preacher 47 years. I've been a high school science and math teacher 15 years. And for the last 30 years, been an evangelist teaching on creation versus evolution. And I take the position the Bible is true, exactly as written. God made everything in six days about 6,000 years ago. So I defend that position. It's a 259 debates now I've had mm, on the topic. Quite with a lot. Universities. Yeah. This is uh, my first debate, so, well, I don't, okay. I'm not a huge fan of the word debate as much as just, um, like, a conversation where we disagree, but you don't believe in uh, evolution at all, then? Well, you'd have to define that word. Depends what you mean. Uh, it has six different meanings. Macroevolution, microevolution, cosmic evolution, organic, chemical, you know, stellar, only one of which has ever been observed. We see variations within the same kind, like there's now which, 300. If I can ask, which one are you referring to that has been observed? Well, I think it's a it's not, it's microevolution is the only one we've ever seen, and I think it's it's confusing to to use that word. We should just call it variation. Um, you mean with microorganisms and how we've observed them evolving in about like hours to days? Yeah. No, no. I mean, micro means minor. Minor, evol minor changes within the same kind. Uh, dogs always produce dogs, but sometimes you get a bigger dog or a littler dog, a long hair, short hair, but it's always a dog. So I think that we, always, we should just call that variation. Uh, the Bible says 20 times in the first seven chapters that the animals will bring forth after their kind. And that's all that's been observed. Well, that, uh, that is immediately true, yes. And the process of evolution, or as you're now saying, variations, evolution is those variations added up over time. And dogs are a very good example because we've taken what was uh, originally, I think, like two, maybe three different kinds of wolves or uh, dog breeds, and now we have vastly different uh, types of breeds each vastly different from one another from like pugs to chihuahuas and great danes um and we've purposely bred those dogs to have certain traits and over time they do you can see they are vastly different right well they're still they're still dog they're, they're saying they're vastly different is um confusing this the topic yeah a pug and a, a great dane are still obviously dog a four-year-old will tell you that Yes, they're not, but they're not mosquito. Yeah, but the the question I guess then is when that process continues to go on and on, at a certain point would a pug become something that doesn't resemble anything like the Great Dane and vice versa? And that's kind of where the studies and everything points to so far. Well, all the studies and all the observation by every animal breeder for centuries is that you may get a weird variety of dog, but it'll still be dog. And so if somebody wishes to imagine that it can go beyond that, that's why I say evolution is a religion. People believe in it. There's no scientific evidence that a dog came from a non-dog. Well, there is evidence that dogs came from wolves. Well, dogs and wolves are the same kind of animal. Certain, um, animal. There is a slight difference between them, but they are... Uh, you know, they are different animals in well, uh, description. They can, still, they can still interbreed. They normally don't, but they could. Um, I don't think that's true with all dogs. I can look that up real quick. I'm actually interested to learn that, if that is true. But from what I know, not all dogs can breed with each other. Like a Great Dane and a Chihuahua just won't work. Well, no, genetically they can't. Now, mechanically, they might have a few problems. Uh, you know? Well, that's a, a description I don't want to imagine. But, <laughs> the uh, yeah, genetically is more what I'm speaking, though. Um, I don't think they would be able to create an offspring. Um, the, the, the point, bigger point would be, it is, is that 
things that we've seen, a bug and a great thing, okay? Let's assume those are two extreme branches on the tree. Can we therefore extrapolate and say, this dog tree is connected to the fish tree way back deep in the ground? And the answer is no. You, you can believe that if you want, but it's not science. I'm sorry, science can you repeat that last part? I was reading something. Well, uh, we have a, a tree, a, a branching tree of all the different dogs, wolves, coyotes. Let's put them all on this one tree and go back Canines, to our ancestor. Yes. An ancestor. Okay. I agree. We see incredible variety of dog. Uh, American Kennel Association says there are uh, 339 recognized breeds of dogs. Mm -hmm. If we put dogs, wolves, and coyotes all on the same, dingoes, all of them, all on the same tree. And we could all agree, these probably go back to some common ancestor that looked like a dog. It had hair. You know, four legs, etc. Uh, no, no uh, hooves. Can we therefore extrapolate that if we go back far enough, the dog is related to the fish? And that would not be science. That would be uh, a religion. Um. Okay. With uh, on a scale of anything going back to like a sea-based creature, that would have to go into millions of years, which I don't think you believe is uh the reality that well first of all yeah i don't think it's a reality i think it's easy to prove the earth can't be millions of years old but even if there were billions or trillions or quadrillions of years we don't observe dogs produce anything off the tree of dogs uh, let's see can dogs can pugs be um, bred with dane i just googled that uh answer is yes oh uh, well that's surprising and you get a concerning but, bugs kind of ugly to start with, and that's even worse. But yeah, well, the thing is, do you not think that at any point a dog can become or can breed into a new species? Like you don't like you think once a dog, like the tree of canines are just permanently canines? I think they always all the evidence, all the observation, which is really what science deals with. The word science mm -hmm. means knowledge from the word seer in Latin. Yeah. What do we know? We know dogs produce dogs. They always have, so far, it's all that's ever been observed. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce anything that would be labeled non-dog. Every, everybody on the planet who's ever crossbred their dogs ends up with dogs. So, that's science. Okay. Now, if you, if um, you again, to... with we can't, uh, we can't uh, switch the word canine with dog because if you, if you say canine, that is a lot more uh, credible because canines do come from canines and everything that we have observed or documented does point to that for the most part. Um, but like dogs do come from wolves and there are and like there are many different kinds of canines that I'm not sure all of which can breed with each other. Like I know coyotes have um, like a different set of genitals than other dogs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, essentially, like, it, it seems like you're acknowledging that these variations do occur, and they do occur over time to build up, yes? Yes, I just googled, can coyotes breed with dogs, and they said, uh, coyotes and dogs are related, they are biologically capable of producing hybrid litters. Oh. Uh, koi, koi dogs have been raised in captivity. Oh, so, yes. But so you're missing the bigger point. You have to imagine SpongeBob style that dogs are related to fish. Do you believe over billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions of years, if you went back in time, which we cannot do, that the dog and the fish had a common ancestor? And if you believe in evolution, yes, you believe that. And that's not science. It's a religious belief. And evolutionists refuse to admit that they have a religion. They don't have a science. Well, the th the thing is it's not a religion because at any point we can uh prove one thing or another wrong via science um okay. it's not as much a religion as a tool to observe the universe um and so like when it comes to over millions of years or long periods of time or things before we were able or did document anything, um, we have to work off of like fossils. We have to work off of things in the ground, evidences that we can 
kind of work out for the most part. There are a certain amount of discrepancies, and that can be like a hundred thousand years, which does sound like a long time, but if you acknowledge like that the universe might be very, very old, um, that is not much time in like cosmic time. And okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I will give you trillions of years. You can say time is not an option. Is there any scientific evidence that dogs can are related to pine trees? Uh, at any point in the past. Well, plants, I think, are a vastly different section. So, like, that would have to be a severely long time, and I'm not incredibly sure on that. I just know plants and animals are different sections of the evolutionary tree, like, completely different. So, like, with fish, there is fossils showing that animals did adapt to go from on sea to on land at certain points, yes. Well, I would have to object and say that no fossil, of no fossils would count as evidence of something changing, because when you find a fossil in the ground, all you could really prove scientifically is it died. You could not prove it had any children that were different than itself. Well, no you can... Animals. I'm sorry to <laughs> interrupt. Um, you can look at the skeletal stru uh, structures of animals and uh, compare them over like the times that you um, find that they were alive, and you can do a decent amount of like uh, backtracking through bone analysis and all that to see when approximately things were. And there has been in almost every species observable, even plants, uh, just changes throughout time. And again, those like the variants that you acknowledge do exist just add up to a point where things gain new abilities new traits and that has been observed in the fossils well that's what you're missing my point the fossils cannot be used as evidence for that at all if you find a fossil in the dirt could you prove that one had any children at all that lived or that were different and an answer in, in an honest court of law, a freshman law student would throw that out and say, no fossils count. Secondly, uh, where are your... Well, law and, and, law and science are vastly different processes. Um, okay, the, so science, means, science is what we observe. We observe yes. fish produce fish. If you wish to imagine something otherwise, you can, but that's not science. It's your imagination. Well, it's not just an imagination or just an imaginary ideal it's the ideal or idea of um taking what evidences we have and trying to find the most logical conclusion to the evidence we have it's it wasn't just thrown out as uh hey evolution and then let's post hoc prove it it was something that we observed over time and then was given that name and if there is significant proof to disprove it, all of science is willing to say, like, okay, that hasn't that we will embrace the new idea or new evidence that is there. Okay, well, way before the evolution idea came along, the majority of people believed and taught that dogs produce dogs and there are no exceptions, and that God said they would bring forth after their kind. So the, the idea from the book of the Lord is that animals and plants will always bring forth after their kind. So really the burden of proof is on the evolutionist. If you want to believe differently, he can, and they do. But they're the new, they're the new kid on the block. Well, there's, been, there's been no evidence at all of a fish producing a non-fish. Certainly not a fish and a dog being related. Well, again, there is evidence of fossils of animals adapting to move from sea to land that has been observed oh. I disagree completely I wouldn't believe that for one second if you got taught that you need your money back for your education um well okay uh that's on uh yeah I don't know what my education has to do with that but uh, no um there is actually just you can look up the fossils showing that things adapted slowly from uh, sea to land, but if we're not ex uh, acknowledging fossils, then I guess I have to go back to uh, the fact that we have seen microorganisms evolve within hours to days, 
and well, so I'm, we I'm, can prove it on a small, small level. Let's take one topic at a time. I do acknowledge fossils. We have thousands of them here in our museum. I love fossil collecting. I've dug up many, many fossils. My point is, no fossils will count as evidence for any change because all you know is that one died. You do not know that fossil had any children that lived. No Ooh. animal today, no dog today produces a non-dog. So if you only <coughs> count dog fossils, why would we believe that was transition between something... Well, no. then we get into a weird kind of contradictory area then of where did animals that we can observe today but have no fossils of in the past come from well yeah i think there's lots of animals today for which no fossils have been found i think all fossils were formed in one big flood in the days of noah or nearly all fossils i'll give it a 99 percent uh fossils don't form today how many animals died today well fossils take a long time to form so no, they don't. You, can um, you can petrify something in a couple of years if you don't petrify it in a couple of years, it's going to run. Naturally, or, um, yeah, well, a couple of years is not a short amount of time, but okay, we'll continue. It, it, but if you don't, if you don't fossilize it in a couple of years, it's going to rot. Mm. All, all creatures that are buried rot. Go to a graveyard, dig up somebody been there more than ten years. They're rotted. They're okay, rotted. but uh, uh, back to the question though of where did these animals come from? If like they only come from each other i think the only logical conclusion is we started off with a pair of dogs created by a creator now whether that's allah or buddha or jehovah that becomes a whole different argument but there has to have been an original created kind and i have chosen to believe capital b believe that that's god of the bible and that the bible is a preserved record of that and there's been no scientific evidence to disprove that the Bible is indeed what it claims. It claims it's the Word of God. So, okay. Um, I'm not opposed to the idea that there is a creationist, a um, a creator, I mean, uh, some kind of divine entity. Um, and I can acknowledge that possibly it that entity did create um, all life forms. But the question of how these life forms got to be how they are, of how they uh, continue to adapt, and the fact that they do adapt and change is like the process that we're trying to point out, and that's what we call evolution. And well, sometimes it seems, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt you, um, but uh, it seems like you're acknowledging like a fair amount of the process of evolution taking place it's just that you don't like the word evolution maybe or like it seems like you acknowledge evolution within a species but then like to go beyond that is where you kind of cut off the idea well that's where i said at the beginning all we've ever observed is variations of the same kind you might get a big dog or a little dog, but you're always going to get a dog. No exceptions. Okay, but you do acknowledge uh, evolution within dogs, yes? Like, well, within one species, that dog or a species does evolve. Well, that's where I think using the word evolution is, is going to confuse the issue. It's, um, we should just call it a variation, because that's all it is. It's a variety of a dog. And well, so, again, the, the idea of evolution is a gathering of uh, variations over time which is well which is why it's a religion it's not observed you have to believe and well the, the, the mysterious force that causes this is time well time is not going to help time's going to make things get worse all we've observed is animals going extinct we've never observed any new kind of animal coming on the scene the extinction's happening um, we discover animals but um yeah uh, like there's there's no possible way to point out one species that is the new species that's not how it works so like it's essentially like dogs again wolves over time they bred the most um like immature or cute uh 
characteristics of wolves to come to the conclusion of a very, very uh, different selection of breeds. And again, like you acknowledge that, um, and like, I, I just like, can we agree on like that much alone? Like that evolution does take play or er, a group of variations on a singular breed does take place over time. And we'd have to add the caveat. All we've observed is these variations are limited. You guys want to imagine that they're not limited. Um, they're fairly limited based on from when we started uh, observing because okay. our ability to observe things as the human species and document them is historically kind of new for any species. We're the first species to ever do that. And um, so, like, over what we have documented, we haven't seen the extreme versions of it and it is technically just a theory but it's the best theory we have based on what we have observed well i I don't agree it's the best theory we have i think it's a ridiculous theory but because all we've observed is dogs produce dogs and so another theory would be wow they must have been created as dogs and they're created to stay within their same kind because that's all we've seen dogs make dogs anything else is imagination it's a religious belief. It's not science. Oh, well, that's a little odd. It seems like in that sentence you belittled religion to imagination, which is not something I considered doing. I don't think that religion is just an imagination thing. I think it, it's something that was created to help explain the universe around us. And so I don't, I'm a little confused as... Like, if religion is just an imagination like evolution, then... Uh, oh, no, by religion, I mean something you take on faith, you believe. Most people believe in gravity. Nobody's ever actually observed it. We can observe the effects of it. Well, no, uh, that's not faith, though. We can literally observe the force of gravity at any point. We can literally pick something up and drop it. And no faith is required to observe the fact that something falls towards the Earth. Well, I agree. I taught physics for years, and I can explain, you know, give me a jar of gravity. What color is it? Well, that's not how gravity works. Gravity isn't a uh, substance. It's a force. And I I will admit it is a very mysterious force that is um, at the heart of a lot of cosmic uh, questions and why does gravity take place and why do why does mass attract to mass it is very uh it's something that we don't have 100 percent answers for but we can observe that it happens oh i, I agree no question there that's mm-hmm. what things that's, that's where science is limited to yeah, what we well, can observe, test and demonstrate yeah science I don't think any scientist or anyone who actually understands what science is would in good faith claim that science is the answer to everything or has the answer to everything. Things like uh, purpose, uh, meaning in life, things like that, like you can't derive from science. Science is just a tool to help us explain observations that we have within the universe. And things with evolution on a long term yet we are kind of taking what we have and putting the pieces together as best we can as humans um but again like so trying to get back to it like we can acknowledge variations happen in species yes we agree on that if we, yes, if we add the caveat, all observed variations are limited. They will never get a dog as big as an elephant. Well, they are limited immediately, yes. they. No dog will produce something vastly different um, immediately. But over time, those variations do, uh, you know, add up, yes? And that's, that's why your, we have different breeds of dogs. That's your belief. We've never observed that. All we've observed in human history, we've, and there have been billions of dogs born, 
and they're always dogs. So anything, if you wish to believe something more than that, that's fine. Well, the pug hasn't always been around. Like we've, we have observation, like the limited documentation we do have, this is actually one we do have of wolves being bred into dogs. And there's a very purposeful, like act of breeding like it's a whole thing of breeding dogs into specific kinds of dogs and getting like purebreds or uh cross breeding with other dogs to try to get like new kinds of dog like it's we have like pretty well documented proof that we have taken the canine species and br- basically bred into existence new kinds new variants no question. There are probably no pugs or chihuahuas on Noah's Ark. Yeah. So, like, I'm... A kill a dog. Okay, here's... Like, I'm not trying to disprove religion or anything. Like, my view is that, like, evolution... And this is actually similar to Darwin's idea, too, which a lot of atheists hate to admit. But evolution can fit into a religious kind of outlook on life and even though it's explaining what we are observing it doesn't necessarily disprove anything religious maybe if you take everything in the bible literally which i have trouble with because humans are humans and they will do human things and even if the word of god was given to humans i don't trust humans not to obscure it or put their own biases into it in some way um so like my view like the thing with evolution like evolution and physics the more i study that the more i genuinely do think there is a better possibility of a divine creator or something of that matter because it is all like beautiful and crazy and it is hard to understand at times And, like, it is crazy to try to think, like, the process of evolution just came out of nowhere. Like, that is something that has more religious, like, backing to it than just anything popping out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Well, the the Bible teaches God popped everything out of nowhere. But for for a creator to create something out of nothing is, is very different than to say nothing created nothing. Nothing okay. created everything. Evolution believes. Can I ask, uh, sorry to interrupt, can I ask then, um, is it maybe like we interpret the Bible in a way that would not necessarily be accurate to how God could describe it, but because we're humans, we couldn't have the language or even the uh, mental capacity to understand it, and possibly he dumbed it down for us we're not the brightest of creatures um possibly days in heaven are vastly different uh maybe days to god are millions of years maybe um there's like a certain amount of like how we interpret the word of god is it seems like we have to assume a lot to take the position that we understand exactly what he means even if even if the bible is 100 percent not tainted by the hands of humans and 100 percent the word of god i still think the way we interpret it is still because we're humans um could not necessarily be exactly how it is well yeah whether the bible is true or not is a different topic and Actually, I'm not asking everybody to teach the Bible in the school, so... I don't think you are. But but you guys are asking everybody to teach your religion in the school. You want everybody to believe in a dog and a fig and have a common ancestor. <coughs> um, no, uh, I don't think it's necessarily forcing anyone to believe in it. We're basically just... And I'm not going to say we. I take that back. I'm not a, like a scientist. I'm not anyone who, like, you know, enforces school curriculum on any degree. Um, But, like, the general idea is to teach children what we understand about the universe. And, like, 
there are certain things with evolution i i can maybe see like if you want to uh explain more in classrooms that these theories aren't like bulletproof and 100 percent like the only theories that could ever be um i do think the process of science should be taught better in a way of helping children understand that at any point new evidence can change the way we observe the universe well not change the way we observe it change um the way in which we see it working um and the as far as teaching children i'm for teaching children what science does find to be accurate descriptions of the universe. Okay. An accurate description of the universe would be all observation for thousands of years is that dogs produce dogs and cows produce cows. There are no exceptions. Therefore, let's stop right there, kids. If somebody says, well, do you think they're related in the past? Oh, we don't know. There's no way to tell that. You can believe that if you want. Um... Okay, well, are you not at all for... So you think that anything before human documentation, we just can't uh, make theories about, we can't uh, have any ideas of how that happened, we can't observe it and try to come to any conclusion? Oh, yeah, we can make all kinds of observations and guesses, but we should let, let people know this is, a, this is a, a belief, this is a theory, and there are many other theories. All we've observed since humans have been recording things is dogs produce dogs. One theory would be maybe they've always produced dogs and that's the way they started off. From a hand of a creator someplace. Uh, again, with the dog thing, I, I feel like we've kind of been over this. Like, wolves are pretty much certainly where dogs came from. And you acknowledge, like, pugs weren't on the ark, pugs weren't there. Uh, Pugs came from us breeding them into existence. Like, you acknowledge that, yeah? Right. They've now got 1,100 species of apples that farmers have spilled selectively. They selected certain apples that yeah. grow best their soil or their climate or their mm -hmm. altitude. I agree. They're still apples. They might have come from a common ancestor called an apple. That is science. Anything more than that is not science. Okay, well... Uh, kind of going off like apples and plants what about like the fact that we as humans did make corn out of uh i believe it was wheat and we purposely genetically chose plants to uh breed until corn was a thing and corn wasn't um initially a part of that plant well it was a plant that had little uh, kernels on it similar to corn mm -hmm. there are I forget how many varieties of corn. It's probably up into the thousands of varieties. Well, I believe, I'm pretty sure it's wheat. Um, I hope I'm not mistaking on that, but I'm pretty sure wheat itself has been selectively bred into multiple new kinds of vegetables that were not uh, in existence before we basically took the parts of the plant we wanted and bred them into something vastly different. Well, yeah, they used uh, Teostin grass, it says here on the internet, with small grains, and they mm. slowly enlarge the grains so they become like a kernel of co a cob of corn. But And that's all done by selective breeding. They didn't create anything, and the corn that we have today would not survive without being baby, you have to babysit it. I mean, you turn, oh, yeah. corn, you know, after, after a few years, there would be no corn if there weren't farmers to babysit the corn. So, yeah, oh, I agree on that, yes. But, like, Again, we're pointing out another area where variants accumulate to make something we can call a different, like, species. Well, it's still, it's still a plant. That, that would not well, yes, it's still a plant. Again, it, a dog's not going to come from a piece of grass. No one's saying that. It's not purely chaotic. It's not anything can come from anything. It's that things over time grow into something that resembles the initial species but does have some kind of new variation to it that we can point to and call a different thing well that's where 
as I said at the very beginning, we better define exactly what we mean by this word evolution. Because um, all, all, all human observation is variations happen, but they're limited. You well, yeah, they are, they're they most certainly limited, and no one's arguing that they're not. It's just that even though with those limitations, given enough time, uh, there is a certain amount of change that will occur to produce a new thing. And that's something you believe on Not faith. vastly different. No, yeah. I'm basing that based on literally just everything we've talked about here with plants and dogs and um, what we have observed as humans. Um, we have observed that you can take certain traits and breed them into a species that is resemblant of the initial one, but is different in a lot of ways and whatever way you selectively bred it. So we, well, and any, so you know, pick up any biology textbook and type, or just go to Google, type in family tree. You will see corn is connected to whales with a line eventually down at the bottom. Do you believe corn and whales have a common ancestor? Because the books certainly teach they do. Do you believe that? Um, Okay, again, I don't think plants and animals are as closely related as you keep implying there. Um, I do think that animals have a common ancestor with other animals, especially ones that are within the same like general uh, description. Okay. But again, like at no point am I going to claim that a plant can make an animal or vice versa or, you know, that a dog can make an elephant. It's wolves make dogs and some wolves did not get bred into uh, other ones. Some wolves uh, carried on more uh, mature traits, whereas we selectively made immature traits for dogs and like it's not it's not a process of like eliminating all wolves and now we have dogs it's we took some wolves and bred them into things like pugs and i'm i'm sorry i keep using pugs they're just a really good example because they're really ugly creatures to me <laughs> we have one right here I'm, 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 oh i'm sorry Pugs are adorable. They're useless and ugly, but they're friendly. Oh, I so, love all dogs. All dogs are the greatest creatures ever. But Okay, but the textbooks show lines between trees and animals. And they, they, they show lines between the whale and the mosquito and the bird and the fish, all going back to a common ancestor. I object to those, that being in science book. That's not science. If those lines do exist, they are really really far back there it's not a mosquito like mosquitoes and elephants are not closely related at all like they're so vastly different that if there is a common ancestor it would have to be so far back that i'm not sure any evidence would be there for that one and again there there's not evidence for everything ever we're working with what we have and so we can deduce like elephants and mammoths have more of a common ancestor. We can deduce that wolves and dogs have common ancestors and things that are alike each other. Yes, we can pretty much with almost complete certainty point that they are related in some way. Yeah, I would agree with those examples you gave, but mm -hmm. can't, you, first of all, we can't go back in time. Secondly, no. there's no evidence for the, the, the mammoth and the dog having an ancestor. No matter how much time you give it, it just isn't science. I wish you guys could admit it's a belief that you have. It's not part of science. Um. Okay, again, I, I'm going, like, some people, I will admit, argue in bad faith. Some people do think science is the cure-all to everything i'm trying to say like i'm not a scientist i don't think scientists are you know divine people i don't think that science is the 
answer to everything. I don't think we have answers to everything. And even in evolution, we have some gaps, some questions, some we question why do things have variations? Why do things adapt? Um, and like, so it's not really just a blind belief as much as we're just taking what we have observed. And I will admit after us, after or prior to any point where we have documentation, we are just kind of doing the best guesswork we can. And based on the fact that we do see things uh, uh, obtain variations, um, we can kind of come to the conclusion that over time, those variations would look vastly different and probably to the point where we would call it a different species. Well, there you are with the word species again. I think a dog and a wolf are different species. But the Bible uses the word kind. They're the same kind of animal. Ask a four-year-old. Well, We've okay, with any... kind, kind is um, a word that is a bit loose, honestly. Um, kind that can still track with evolution. Like, it's still, you're still giving birth to your kind. And again, these evolutions don't occur overnight. It's not one generation to a next it's multiple, multiple generations before you even see something slightly different. So, with those variations, it's... Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your last point? I ranted a well, bit while I was reading and got lost. I just googled the definition of species. In biology, a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. The species is the principal natural taxonomic unit, ranking below genus. Then it says definition number two, a kind or sort. Okay. So, God said they'd bring forth after their kind. Can you show me any example where any animal or plant has ever produced one that we can observe that is, that is a different kind? Not immediately, no, but over time, well, yes. That's why it's a religion. Jonathan, can't you see... Well, you, how is it a religion you, if we're if we're basing it off observation? Yeah, the observation is dogs produce dogs. There is no observation. Dogs came from a mosquito or an amoeba. Well, the observation is canines make canines, but the right. type of canine can be genetically altered to make vastly different kinds of canines. Correct, and that's where the that's where it stops. You reach the tip of the branch on the tree. You still have a canine. Same thing with the cows. There's a cows that give more milk and cows that have more beef and cows that can handle the cold weather. Cows with big horns, cows with no horns. They're always cows. And most of the varieties farmers have produced, you got to babysit the herd now because it couldn't survive in the wild. Yeah, I agree. And that, it's to me, that points to a small example of evolution, though. Well, that's what we said at the beginning. What do you mean by evolution? Variations can happen either naturally or by man causing them. I mean, if you turn all the dogs yeah. in the world loose in Alaska, only the dogs with long hair and, you know, thick fur, uh, the coyote type or the, the um, wolf type is the only kind that can survive in the cold of Alaska. I, always would, I agree. Would I so can... nat nature can select certain body types that can handle that weather or that climate. Now, it didn't change it to anything else. It selected something that was already in the gene code. It, the dog did not develop a, a central heating system. No. It just... Okay, it, well, yeah, I, I agree with you completely. It's just that, like, you're explaining the process of evolution, but saying it's not evolution because it didn't do, like, some crazy thing, like, you know, get air conditioning in its body or something, like... No one's, no one is going to say that you just make these uh, adaptions on the fly. It's essentially the dogs who wouldn't survive would die off, and the ones who can would continue to uh, breed, and then you would see those ones um, be the surviving one. The rest would go extinct, and over time they would get fluffier and more able to 
deal with the cold because that would be the trait that helped them survive. Thus, the fluffier the coat, the more likely you are to survive and uh, carry on your genes. So, like, that's basically the process of evolution. It's just, like, no one's really claiming that dogs are going to get rockets on their backs and, uh, you know, all this. It's, it's a lot more minute than that. And it seems like you, you're acknowledging the process of evolution and especially where we observe it. It's just, um, again, like the word evolution or because you think maybe evolution is a more grandiose uh, force than it really is. Maybe some people have tried arguing with you that evolution is just like the perfect uh, force in all uh, life forms but it is kind of random and not perfect by any means so like I'm still trying to pinpoint where you're not liking the word evolution no no it seems to me like you're acknowledging all we can see are variations and anything beyond that you have to res resort to more time billions of years therefore it's not observable it's not science it's imagination just imagine, if we went back far enough, the mosquito and the whale had a common ancestor. So... That's the kids in the textbooks. I can show you the books. Okay, if it says that in the textbook, um, okay. I so, might disagree with it. I'm not going to back every textbook ever, especially knowing that textbooks do change over time and do change the information in it to update with what we have discovered. Um, just type, type in, type in uh, Tree of Life. Okay. And you will see a tree of life showing whales with lines connected back to the same ancestor as a fish and a frog and a, and a bird. That's not science. So, I think it's fake, stupid, real stupid. So, real, real quick, silly. with a question um, to kind of clarify this. Um, if you observe a process, if you observe something over a certain amount of time, can you not then assume that that process was happening before you started observing it? Well, I think they've observed you can train a cow to jump. They have competition. Whose cow can jump the highest? And I think you can train a cow to jump over a two-foot fence. Therefore, over millions and millions of years, you can train a cow to jump over the moon. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think there anything has that ability. Jonathan, that's exactly what you are doing. No, no, yes, not yes. over millions of years, something will gain the ability to defy gravity. That's not something anyone's claiming. That's not something I'm claiming, especially. I'm claiming that you pass down your genetics, and those genetics carry on to eventually make slight altercations and have a change. Whether you want to agree that that happens solely within one species or all species ever, um, like, I feel like we have to at least acknowledge the observations that we have, and then I don't think it's unfair to assume that any observation we have over a period of time probably was happening before we started observing it. Okay, well, I think humans have been trying to run faster for a long time. They have competition called Olympics and sporting events. And they've now got humans who can run 100 yards in 9 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rabbits can run 100 yards in 4 seconds. Do you think we'll ever get a human who can run 100 yards in 4 seconds? Or is there a limit? Um. Well, there's a limit to what one species can evolve into, yes. No, oh, there you go. You believe in creation, then. Well, I, again, I've never, I've never said that I don't believe there is or isn't a creation something very well could have created um all of life but we have observed the process of evolution in life forms and i'm not saying and even darwin didn't say that evolution disproves evolution or evolution disproves god or religion in any way i i'm 100 percent totally open to the idea that maybe um god did make us all and 
then part of making us is giving us the ability to evolve and adapt in certain ways. Right. I think humans can produce a variety of offspring, some taller, some shorter, some blonde hair, some black hair. But they're always humans. They're limited to human. Now, you, you, 50 times tonight you've referred to time as the, what would solve the problem. Let me explain it. Just, just talk to that issue for just a second. If I could show you scientifically, the Earth cannot be billions of years old. If I took away time from your equation, everything you believe in would collapse. Okay. Um, no. Again, no. I, I, I don't... Maybe I haven't done a good job of uh, explaining my beliefs in particular. Um, again, even if you can prove that the the universe, the world, is only a couple thousand years old, we still have the observation of evolution happening, and I would still have to think that evolution was happening throughout those uh, 4,000, 5,000 years. Well, yes. That's why, it could, again, what do you mean by evolution? I think probably black people, Chinese people, red people, white people all had a common ancestor called people. I think dogs, chihuahuas, great danes, and pugs had a common ancestor called dog. I think the mammoth and the mastodon and the uh, uh, African elephant and the Asian elephant had a common ancestor, and it was an elephant, had a long trunk and four legs. It was not a fish. So anybody wants to believe anything more than that, they have to admit this is what they believe, but they just won't do it. It's a religious belief, which is fine. You can have any religion you want. Okay, I'm, they, I'm in no way putting it. down beliefs, and people can believe. It's, um, it's just the thing is you're kind of switching belief with something that is a guess based on evidence, which is more than just a belief at that point. If you have, like, reasons to, uh, like, have an idea about how the universe works, it's not just a blind faith belief. It's a, uh, it's taking observation from what we do have and trying to explain what we see around us. And, like, even if there's a small amount of time throughout the universe, even if there's a large amount of time, based on what we observe, we have observed variations occurring in life forms, and it. I still don't think it's unfair to assume that a force like that would have been there before we started observing it. Not one thing in the universe just turns on because we acknowledge it. A lot of things are there, and then we discover it or uh, find out ways to describe or come to the best conclusion that we have about it. But um, I don't think any real scientist, anyone who uh, talks in good faith, would say that it has every answer and uh, is a, like, no one would really blind faith defend something scientifically. It's usually based off observations and evidence we have. Well, that sounds great and grandiose, but the textbooks, which we all pay for, are teaching the kids, just Google right now, family tree of life. Oh, yeah. and do you see a picture with whales and pine trees connected with a line going back? And I'm telling you right now, the answer is yes, you will. One second, I googled it, and I'm looking up images. There's a lot of pictures of trees. Family tr tree of life. Yeah, that's what I typed in. Okay. One second. Does, um, it show, does it show everything going back to a, 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 a protista or a single cell ancestor of everything? Um, here's one image. I don't know if it's 100% um, accurate. I don't see any credentials about it, but there is a certain, like, if you go far enough back, it does point to a uh, ancestry of most life forms, yes. I don't know if that's 100% true. I'm not going to defend this random image on Google. I don't know if that's completely accurate. And again, some people um, 
don't understand everything scientifically and then you know put things on the internet and think they're being accurate when they're slightly off in some ways but well, all the major universities are teaching this and putting these pictures in their textbook and the kid is going to see it and believe it i'm looking at one that has humans with a line drawn back to an origin of life protista that same ancestor protista somehow produced humans and octopus and squid and pine trees and mosquitoes and fish and turtles they're everything alive today is on this chart this is stupid this is not science so okay with everything sharing an ancestry that's something that i can agree is um pretty much in the hypothesis kind of theory realm um and we don't have 100 percent proof on that i will concede that right away um and i'm not going to claim that everything came from one specific uh life form and then branched off um i'm more just saying based on the observations that we already can agree to and the variations occurring we can like that's what we call evolution like that's evolution you know the variations occurring then, then, then you and I agree variations occur and most people call that microevolution I think it's a bad term but we'll use it that's where it stops everything else is religious that tree of life showing trees and whales related is not a variation that's stupid um okay like this is a really weird angle you're taking because i feel like it kind of like diminishes religion at the same time as um makes like factual hypotheses or not factual hypotheses um hypotheses based on facts um like it, you're kind of diminishing both at the same time where i have no interest in diminishing either I think both are very valuable and valid things to use to try to explain the universe around us. Well, no, I, I, I see, I admit, I have a religion. I believe God did it. I can't prove it. I can't show you God. But they will not admit that theirs is also a religious belief. I cannot. What is the origin of life? Where did life get started? Well, that's a great question. Science, I don't believe, has an answer to that yet. Well, then they should admit that. Science, I, deal with science. I'm pretty sure science, for the most part, admits that. And if it doesn't admit that well enough, I think it should. I think um, science has been taught as a bit too uh, infallible, too perfect of a process when it's not. And I'm not against teaching that science is something that is constantly being updated. Um, our understanding of the universe is constantly being changed based on what evidence we find, what uh, observations we make. Um, yeah, I'm not here to say, like, science is perfect, and if some people do treat it as a religion, that's more of them misusing it more than science being a religion. Science is, again, just the tool to... Uh, I, I've never said science is a religion. Science is what we know. We know dogs produce dogs. Anything more than that, dogs and pine trees, now that's a religion. It's not part of science. I love science. I'm not against science. I taught science 15 years. I'll take a quiz against anybody. I taught biology, earth science, physical science. I think I can hold my own on a, a general science knowledge quiz on any of those topics. But Yeah, I'm not uh, questioning your intelligence in any way. I'm just, uh, so like with assumptions... I guess we can call them for now. Based on things prior to our observation, I feel like I might have said this question already. Um, so I'm, I apologize if I already did, but um, is it not is it not like a a reasonable thing to assume that any process we observe was already there and uh, probably had a, a effect before? You know, that's where you just left science, which is fine, and you went to your belief. 
Well, well no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Um, I'm basing it on the observations that we have, and sure. I don't think it's a belief to basically deduce that anything we observe is part of the universe and always was, no matter how long the universe has been around. Well, let's go back to the cow example. We can observe with training cows can jump higher. Could we ever train one to jump 60 feet in the air? Okay, um, probably not 60 feet. Again, limitations are a thing that's not... Bingo! There are limits to the dog. Yeah, I'm, I've never said there wasn't. Okay, they've got dogs as small as a toy chihuahua. Mm -hmm. Will they ever get a dog as small as a mouse? Probably over time. They, um, yeah. It seems like uh, species are easier to breed down in size than up um but again i maybe not dude evolution is not a 100 percent. we can't uh point out exactly how things are going to work we're basically taking the traits we like and breeding them and hoping that those are the ones that come out and then when that does come out we breed those ones with other ones that share that trait Well, okay, we've gone an hour and gotten absolutely nowhere, Jonathan. This is long enough. But, uh, um, uh, no, I actually found some value in this conversation. It wasn't okay. Oh, good. absolutely well, uh, pointless. But, uh, yeah. The Bible, the Bible says all animals and plants were created by God to bring forth after their kind, and that's all we've ever observed. The Bible also says when you die, you're going to face God and be judged for everything you've ever said or thought or done. You, whether you believe it or not, according to the Bible anyway, are going to face God one day. Jonathan, where are you going when you die? I have no idea, and I don't think anyone really does. I think we have a hope and a general kind of idea that, you know, life might continue. And I can't say whether it does or not. I have no way of proving that. I don't think anyone does. Um... And even if there has been divine intervention in the past or uh, God has given us some amount of word, I don't think humans are responsible enough to convey it properly. So that's my general stance on it, on that. And again, I'm not anti-religious. I'm not someone who... Uh, seeks to destroy other people's faith. I have no interest in that. Um, I just think we can, uh, you know, come to understandings of the universe around us and have uh, conversations about that. I, I, I understand that evolution historically has been tied to uh, religion and people saying, like, evolution disproves God and all that. I think that's utterly silly and ridiculous. I do not think that any observation in the universe can 100% disprove uh, God, religion, afterlife, anything like that. Um, we're just seeing what we see and jotting it down and trying to understand the best we can. Well, it's a certainty you're going to die. What happens after that, according to the Bible, is you're going to face God, and he gave a list of rules, you know, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt, don't, don't, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat. Have you ever broken any of God's rules? Um, probably on some amount. Uh, not on purpose. I, I try to generally live as good of a life as I can. I try to be as good to people as I can. And even though I don't consider the Bible 100%, uh, accurate i i do think there is a certain amount of just general ethics and uh morals that even in the bible and anywhere else has been mostly come to agreeance on of what is productive and counterproductive to do in society and as a member of a species so the like i try to live i guess a godly life even if i have no real way of knowing if it's 100 percent true or if it's true at all 
Um, and I guess that's me just uh, wanting to be a good person. But also, yeah, yeah I, eternal damnation doesn't sound fun either. And I wouldn't like that just because I was, you know, having fun or whatever. So, I don't know. As far as heaven and hell, I I hope heaven. I'm doing my best to be a good person. And I, more than anything, just uh, enjoy talking about, you know, con- uh, deep conversations and stuff like that so all right well uh thank you for having me i got uh, uh, plenty to do this evening here but uh, uh, yeah. let's, have, let's have this conversation again but, oh uh, yeah I'll more than you, i'll see your, see your judgment day i hate, hate to have you not have trusted christ because he, he claims he was god almighty he claims he created everything yeah. he claims well, he died for you we can have more of a religious based conversation um if you want, we can have a conversation about whatever you whatever you want, man. I uh, I just like talking to people, and I'm always here. Um, reach out to me if you ever want to talk about anything. Uh, I'll probably reach out to you in the future and see if you want to talk. Thank you very, very much for coming on. It does mean a lot. And I, I did enjoy talking to you. It was actually right. nice. Sounds great. Thank right. you, sir. Have a nice day, man. All right. You too. Bye-bye. You too. All right, cool. So that was a uh, Kent Hovind. Um, it was uh, that was a lot more pleasant than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I'm glad at no point he insulted me or the school thing caught me off guard. He was like, "Then you need your money back," and I was like, "Oh, okay." Uh, it was a weird twist. I I felt like I took it way not the way I should have. I was just so taken off guard. Um, but after that, like, it was pretty much just a, a pretty civil conversation. Um, there's certain things that I feel like I should have pushed him on more, but I didn't want to become redundant and have the same loop of a conversation over and over. Um, from what I gather, it's, again, it seems like he acknowledges the process of evolution especially where we can observe it um and i i should have pushed him on the part where um and i think i brought it up like three times so i might have been redundant if i brought it up anymore of if we can see a process happening can we not assume that same process has always been happening um other than that I think he isn't as opposed to the idea of evolution as he might come across on first view. Um, I only watched like a couple of his videos. Um, But I think a lot of atheists have probably talked to him and probably came at it from a very aggressive standpoint. So a lot of times I did tell he was being a bit defensive or like responding to something that I never said or even meant to imply if I did um and I would have to like talk him back from that and be like no I've I've never said that I don't think uh that's a good thing to say or imply um but I'm knowing how atheists can be I'm sure that someone has said something or made some kind of assertion that was a bit outlandish or whatever. Um, Other than that, fun conversation. I'll probably hit him up and talk to him again. If anyone wants to debate about anything, I, I like talking. So we can debate about vaccines. I'm very pro mandate. We can talk about uh, fucking Dave Chappelle if you want. That's a dead topic, but I think he needs to chill. Um, I don't know. Literally, whatever. Thank you for watching if you watch this far in. Um, yeah. Good night.